back to They Did What, your source for the internet's craziest, most entertaining stories, where I go with them, analyze them, and most certainly make fun of them. Today, or later on today, I'm going over part 10 of the story, titled, I dished my bride on our honeymoon after I saw her cheating. Five months later, she's back and pregnant. And guys, I'm going to continue on where I left off a couple hours ago with part 9. If you didn't see it, go back and watch it, and you'll uh, know where we stand. And let's just say it ended where, well, get a lot of dirt in these crazy gals. It says, after living with me for a while, Amy, a.k.a. Miss Dirty Butt, has mostly given up on trying to get me to take Jill back. Even Jill is beginning to realize that reconciliation is probably not happening. But my mother has not given up. She calls all the reasons why I should forgive Jill. <laughs> she just wants her out of the house. I cut her off and tell her that if she continues, I'll hang up on her. In the middle of April, Mom called to tell me that I better come to get Jill before she runs off with Tony. I don't care. Let Tony have her. My mother was very upset. as was something that might affect the son, so I, my son, so I listen. My mother overheard Jill and Jane talking. Jill sees Tony every time he comes through town. Every few weeks, my mom, my mother paused her narr- every few. I met my mother pause her narration and tell me again that there's nothing going on between Jill and Tony. They're just friends. Uh Uh-huh. Weren't they the lovers in college? She continued that when Jill is out with Tony, Jane goes out on her own. My mother thinks Jane goes to the bars to pick up girls. They sometimes don't see Jane for days. My mother said it should be clear, even to me, that Jill and Jane are, are not together anymore. Also, just friends. Anyway, my mother said that she feels like she's running a boarding house. I told her to throw them both out. She says she can't do that. She's afraid Jill will move away, and that will be the end of any hope we'll have to reconcile. (laughs) Mom, not my problem. So my mother overheard Jill and Jane talking. Jill told Jane their best plan is for Jill to go live with Tony, eventually marry him. Jane can live nearby. Jill and Jane won't be able to live together, but that would also be true of Jill if I took Jill back. But Tony doesn't want the kid around. He tells Jill that he doesn't see a future for them because she brings the kid along his baggage. Well, Tony's a scumbag, but I can't blame Tony in that regard. He doesn't want kids and certainly doesn't want to raise someone else's son. Again, I can't blame Tony in that regard. Jill keeps telling Tony the child is not a problem. I'll have the boy. Tony will never see the boy. Jane said that if Jill is willing to abandon her son to be with Tony, why why don't Jill and Jane just go in Guadalupe? They don't need Tony. Joe replied that it's one thing to be 250 miles away living with Tony and another thing to be thousands of miles in Guadalupe. With Tony, she'll at least be able to visit her son occasionally. Jane said Jill is delusional. Every time Jill tries to talk to Tony about the future, he tells her he doesn't want to be burdened with a kid. Tony's a low life, but Tony is not dumb. If Jill's living with Tony, every time she wants to go see the kid, Tony will freak out. Jill gave up trying to get custody, left her son with me, to please Tony. But Tony's still saying the same stuff about not wanting to be with someone who has a child. As Tony invited Jill to come visit him, meet his family and friends. No, Jill doesn't talk about the boy. It's, it's, never, it's never unavailable to Tony because of the boy, but Tony still tells Jill that her having a son is a deal killer for him. There is no future with Tony for Jill. Even if there, was a, there wasn't a child, there'd be no future with Tony. Tony, Tony is a chatter Tyrone. Jill said that's not true. Tony was in love with Jill in college. He wanted to marry her. That hasn't changed. Her son is the only sticking point. She'll just have to convince Tony that the boy won't be part of their lives. And let the manipulation and plotting and scheming continue. Jane said ditch Tony. Why do they need Tony anyway? Jane and Jill can get a piece of and get a place together if here if that's where Jill wants to live. Jill says she's an elementary school teacher. <laughs> God, those poor kids. She can start back teaching in the fall. If she's lucky, since she has no skills or education, Jane maybe can get a job folding chairs at a swimming pool <laughs> or some other minimum wage job. Between the two of them, they won't, have, they won't have enough money to support themselves. Tony's parents are wealthy, and he makes a good living. It doesn't look like I'm going to be able to take Jill back, so Tony's really the only option. All these assholes scheming about each other. Jill said she's running out of money. Her savings are almost gone. They have some, to do something soon. My mother was telling me this, so I would rush over to get Jill before she took off with Tony. Instead, I told my mother, this is great news. Jill will, leave my, Jill will leave my son with me and move 250 miles away. 
That's a dream come true. My mother said I should take this seriously. I haven't done anything so far that would permanently wreck my marriage, but I'm, le but I'm leaving Jill no choice. If I let Jill move away, our marriage will be lost. It'll be my fault, and I regret it for the rest of my life. I told my mother the marriage is almost is already over. She just can't give up. But her perception of you is that you'll eventually cave. At least now I know why Jill stopped trying to get custody. Jill wants Tony, but Tony does not want my kid around. A few days after my mother's call, Jill came over for a scheduled visit with our son. Jill was hysterical. She uh, could barely talk and was so upset. Now what? We sat down across from each other and I waited for her to calm down. I figured this would be another attempt to, at reconciliation. Well, the odds are, yes, that is it. Jill spent a lot of time at our house growing up. My parents even bought a bed for Jill because she slept over so much. Jill's parents live across the street. My understanding has always been that Jill spent so much time at our house because her father is a mean drunk. Her parents are always arguing. Our place was a safe haven. Jill finally calmed down enough to talk. She said her father had moved into my mother's house with them. Hold on. She said her father had moved into my mother's house with them. Her father and my mother were now together. <laughs> the father, her father's probably banging, you know, this guy's mom a long time ago. They explained to Jill that her father had been helping my mother through her, this difficult time, and they become very fond of each other. Translation, he's helping her financially, and she's fucking him. Jill's father decided to leave Jill's mother to be with my mother. They want to try to make a go of it together. Jill looked at me, red-eyed with tears streaming down her face, and asked, how could they do this to her mother? Her mother didn't deserve this. How can people be so selfish? So dishonest, she went back to howling. Is she really asking that question, really? How can people so be so dishonest, so selfish, really, from her? Get a freaking mirror, honey. Nothing Jill could have t told me would have shocked me more. I thought the only interaction between my parents and Jill's were about us kids. They didn't socialize and were not friends. Then I thought there's no way any sane man leaves Jill's mother for any other woman. Jill's mother must have thrown her father out. I asked Jill if the relationship began after my father moved out. Jill said that's what what uh, they want Jill to believe, but that's a lie. Jill talked to her mother after my mother and her father announced the new arrangement. Jill said her mother caught them together at our wedding last June. Uh-huh. And now you're telling me this? Jill's parents paid for the wedding at a, a resort near us, but my uncle paid for rooms at the resort for everyone in the immediate wedding party. The night before the wedding, we hosted a groom's dinner. After dinner, people went out to the resort patio and roamed the resort ground. Jill's mother saw my mother say something to Jill's father and then went back into the hotel. A few minutes later, Jill's father went back inside as well. Jill's mother followed her husband and found the two of them kissing in the hallway. Then they went to my parents' hotel room. They didn't return to the patio for almost an hour. Oh, what were they doing? Playing cards? Jill said her parents have been fighting nonstop since the wedding. Jill's mother told Jill she's glad her husband is finally gone. Fucking soap opera. Jill continued that when they were explaining to Jill about her father moving with my mother, Jill's father also announced that Jane had to leave. She could no longer live my mother's. Jill's father has always been unhappy about Jane. Jill paused to tell me that she and Jane are now only friends now. And I shrugged. Jill continued that her father told them he's not going to live under the same roof with sinners. <laughs> sinners, really? Jane had to find someplace else to live. Jane did. Jill and Jane moved in with Jill's mother that afternoon. <sighs> what street is this on? I need to know so I can tell you guys to avoid this street. Jill paused again to tell me that even though Jill had a double bed in her bedroom and her mother's, Jane is sleeping on the floor. Well, Jane belongs on the floor along with the dog. In fact, the dog should be in the bed and Jane should be on the floor. Another shrug. Jill says she doesn't want to live with two adulterers, my mother and her father. Anyway, Jill's mother is delighted to have the two girls living with her. Her mother seems alive for the first time in ages. Yeah, well, no good deed goes unpunished, Mom. I asked Jill she thinks our parents are hooking up before our wedding. Jill said she thought a lot about that. Jill thinks it's been going on for years. That's what I think. Do I remember starting school with Amy, Jill, and I when I were five years old? Vaguely. 
Jill and her parents had moved in across the street from us right before the school started. My mother or Jill's mother wouldn't, wouldn't drop the three of us at school in the morning, and Jill's father would get us at the bus stop after school. We'd all go back to Jill's house until my mother came to get us. My parents are teachers, so neither, neither could get us right after school. My father always stayed late at school, uh, coaching one sport or another to make extra money. He almost never got home before 6 p.m. Jill's mother worked 9 to 5. Jill's father worked nights 10 to 6. 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. He got home from work and slept un- until it was time to meet our school bus. He took us three back- kids back to Jill's house and started drinking. My mother would come to Jill's house to get us as soon as she left school. But mom and, and Jill's dad always had to t- talk before he went home. They told us they told us adult talk, so they put us in Jill's bedroom and uh, closed the door. When they finished talking, my mother would get to us from Jill's bedroom to take us home. Jill's father's bedroom door was always closed when we left. My mother said he was napping because he had to work all night. Uh, I'm about to find. I think we're about to find out some t- at some point that somebody else is somebody's daughter and that type of thing. That's coming. This went on until we were about 10 or 11 years old and were able to be on our own. At that point, the three of us got up the school bus and went directly to our house. My mother told us three kids to always go to our house and never to Jill's. Jill's father was sleeping and couldn't be disturbed. She knew he was sleeping because she got, got home from school, parked her car, and walked over to Jill's house to check on Jill's father. Oh, I'm sure she checked on him to make sure he's okay. Probably tuck him in, too. My mother would always return home in time to start dinner and before my father got home. And before Jill's mother got home, too. My mom said that we shouldn't mention to Dad that Mom was checking on Jill's father. Dad didn't like Jill's father. But Mom wanted to make sure Jill's dad wasn't drinking so much and would be bad for Jill to go home to. Uh Uh-huh. What a saint the mother is here. I hadn't thought about any of that in years. I never suspected a thing. None of us kids did. By the time we were old enough that we might begin to wonder about mother, my mother's behavior, Jill's father had started working the day shift. My mother stopped checking in on him when she got home from work. I had no idea my mom and Jill's dad were hooking up for the past 20 years. Uh, once a cheater, always a cheater. Now you know why there was all this turmoil going on across the street and all that. My father isn't talking to my sister Amy because, according to my mom's diary, Amy ran to my mother when my mother was on the date. Amy followed my mother's wishes and didn't tell anyone. It was a Sunday morning, so my father would would be around. I called him and asked if my mom wrote in her diary who she was with when Amy saw her out on the date. No. Did my mother ever mention Jill's father in her diaries? No. He wanted to know why I was making, uh, why I was asking about Jill's father. Dude, can't you connect the dots? I told him Jill's father had moved in with mom. He didn't say anything for a while and then said, better him than me. I told him I'd see him in our support group later and we got off the phone. So it sounds like this dude's dad is moving on. He's just like, <laughs> he, he can't put anything past his very soon to be ex-wife and this dude's mother. So I called Amy. I told Jill to keep quiet. If Amy knew Jill was there, she refused to tell me anything. I reminded Amy that mom wrote in her diary that Amy saw her out on the date. Did Amy know the guy mom was with? Amy said she promised not to tell. And she's not going to tell me now. At this point, Amy was still living in my uncle's and not talking to Jill. Well, Amy isn't very happy with you either. She may not know the new arrangements at my mother's. I told Amy Jill's father moved in with our mother and that Jill and Jane had moved in with Jill's mother. I'm trying to figure out how long mom and Jill's dad have been lovers. Amy didn't say anything. Then she said the guy that she saw my mother on a date with was, in fact, Jill's father. Aha! Uh-huh. She agreed not to tell because it would destroy Jill's parents' marriage and Jill would end up hating mom. Amy was 16 years old and didn't want to hurt her best friend. And she didn't want Jill to be mad at mom. She kept her mouth shut. I told Amy that dad says there's nothing in mom's diary about Jill's father. Amy says she knows that. She and Jill discovered mom's diary when they were 8 or 9 years old. They read them when my mother wasn't around. <laughs> Little sneaks. I said, wait. Amy told me that Jill didn't know that Mom cheated on Dad. If Jill read the diary, she certainly knew Mom was unfaithful. Amy didn't say anything for a while and then asked irritably, do I want her to continue about Mom's diaries or not? Amy was annoyed that I kept bringing up the lies she told me. I told her to go ahead. Amy said our mother caught Amy reading the diary and Jill was not there. Our mother was not upset, just asked if Jill and I were also reading the diaries, and Amy said no. 
I have a hard time believing the mother wouldn't be upset caught the kids reading her diaries. It was true about me, but not about Jill. Mama told, mom told, I almost said mama, I sound like Forrest got mama. Mom told Amy to keep her mouth shut. She made dad happy, he loved her, and she took care of her kids. She never neglected her family, but she was more than a wife and a mother. It was no one else's business how she spent her free time. Uh, bullshit. If Amy told anyone, it might destroy mom's marriage and Jill's parents' marriage. Did Amy want that? Amy kept her mouth shut. Well, it doesn't sound like Amy kept her mouth shut in other ways for very long at 16 years old and on. Amy said she thought mom was right. Mom was a good wife and mother and it was not anyone's business what mom did in her free time. She and Jill kept reading mom's diaries. <clears throat> After Amy saw my mother <clears throat> with Jill's father on a date, she asked my mother... She asked my mother had had written about him in the diaries. She said she couldn't take that chance that she that we would find the diaries and read them. It was one thing to write about her liaisons with men they didn't know about, but it would be devastating if they found out about Jill's dad, especially damaging for Jill. So she didn't write about him. Amy asked if there was anyone else she wasn't writing about. Our mother responded that she only wrote about the men who were important to her, who were unimportant to her. Those who she was emotionally connected to and had a relationship with, she didn't write about Jill's father for obvious reasons. How many men were there over the years, huh? <clears throat> she also didn't write about her random hookups. She'd meet guys she wanted to have fun with, but wasn't interested in having a relationship with. That was just itch scratching. They weren't important enough to write about, or she didn't want to write about them. They were just occasional diversions from the guy she was currently developing a serious relationship with. And mom said she couldn't figure out where these one-night stands fit in her life. She could understand falling in love with someone, building a relationship with him, and relieving all that excitement by writing about it in her diary. Oh my god. Again, this guy's poor father here. But she couldn't understand her need for random hookups with strangers. The need for anonymous SCX says something about her that she didn't want to think about. She always told herself SCX should be part of a loving relationship. This mother doesn't know anything about a loving relationship. So what was she doing with all these one-nighters? She didn't write about them because she didn't want them, didn't want to think about them or what she, what it said about her. Oh, okay. Amy asked how long it's been going on with Jill's dad. Mom said her their relationship started when Jill's family moved across the street, but she had to meet Jill's dad when she was in her late twenties. Jill's dad was working as a bagger at the local grocery store. Mom asked him to help her take her bags to the car, and he did. Mom asked if he wanted to come over with her, and he did. It was just a few times with him. He got off work late, too. He got off work, work late to get him out of the house before Dad arrived. He couldn't keep telling his boss that he was sick and needed to leave work early. He also told Mom he was 17, but she found out he was 15 years old. <laughs> what? He was definitely not relationship material, so she didn't write about him in the diary. She forgot all about him until Jill's family moved across the street. Pure coincidence. That was over 20 years ago. They've been seeing each other on and off since then. Later, when Amy found out that my father was not her father, she asked Mom if Jill's dad could be her father. The timing seemed to match up. Mom told her that she had her original fling with Jill's dad when Mom was trying to get pregnant. Amy's father is either dead, Jill's dad, or Mom's high school boyfriend. Mom told Amy she didn't worry about it at the time. What difference did it make who the father was? The real father wasn't important. Dad was there to be her father. Oh, my God. Uh, Mom something. I wouldn't have anything to fucking do with this mother. Mom only became concerned about who the real father was when Jill and I started to get serious in high school. I couldn't be sleeping with my half-sister. Amy looks like my mother, but she also looks a lot like Jill's father. Same eyes, hair color, and complexion. But I look exactly like my dad. Anyone who sees my father and, ta and, uh, and me together immediately knows he's my dad. Since I, look like more, since, I look, since I look more like my father than Amy's looks more like Jill's father, Mom stopped worrying that Jill might be my sister. <laughs> Jerry, Jerry. It was obvious that I was my father's son. Who knew what, that the fraternal twins could have different fathers? Mom says she doesn't know who Amy's father is. I told Amy that I really hadn't noticed before, but she doesn't look a lot like she does look a lot like Jill's father. Amy responded that she knows that. 
Since Jill and Jane had moved out of my mother's, she'll move back in there. She'll figure out a way to get Jill's father's DNA, and we get and we got off the phone. Oh boy. Jill heard all this. She said she said another betrayal by Amy. Amy hid her father's and mother's affair from Jill all this time. Unbelievable. Amy was never really Jill's friend. She told me she glad she was glad to be away from all of them. Her scumbag cheat of her father, my scumbag cheat of her mother, and the lying backstabbing Amy. Amy and her son moved back in with my mother. She'll need my mother's help when she gives birth. So Amy might be finally living under the same roof with her mother and real father. <laughs> I don't know yet if she's been able to get Jill's father DNA tested. Well, shouldn't be too hard for her. I started to work out regularly in college. I still I still tried to get to the gym, but since I've been putting in long hours at work recently, I haven't had time. Things are settling down at work, so I'm back at the gym. Well, good for you, bro. I'll make you feel better. I was at the gym coming out of the locker room on Saturday in my uh, middle of, my, of, of April when I saw Jill's mother near the entrance to the gym. Let me tell you about Jill's mother. My parents are in their early 50s. Jill's mother is about 40, but looks like she's in her early 30s. And she had Jill when she was 16 years old. So let's repeat this again. His parents are in their early 50s. So not much older than me. Jill's mother is about 40, but looks like she's in her early 30s. And she had Jill when she's 16. Okay, so Jill's mom is younger than me. We can see where this is going. Or can we? Jill looks like her mother, and Jill's very good-looking. Really pretty, but Jill's mother is stunning. Okay, so she's a hot cougar. Yeah, you can have damn good-looking women in their 40s, believe me. I know. However, it still doesn't compare to their 20s. Let's not, let's not forget that. Although I've seen a lot of women work so hard to take care of themselves, they look far better than these sloppy 20-somethings, so go figure. When I was entering my teenage years, and for a lot of years backwards, I got off by fantasizing about Jill's mom. Stacy's mom, huh? She was in her late 20s then, and I thought she was the sexiest woman in the world. I still think she's the sexiest woman in the world. I like gals in my class, but none of them compared to Jill's mom. When Jill and I got together in high school, I sometimes wondered if I was fulfilling those fantasies I had about Jill's mom. Would Jill work for me? Anyway, that Saturday, Jill's mom, who, whose name is, well, I'm not going to say her name, was at the front of the gym looking around confused. I went up to say hello. <clears throat> she was happy to see me. She said she just joined the gym, had the tour, and they gave her they gave the new members, but didn't know how to get started. Too much equipment, too many choices. She smiled and said, didn't know what she was going to do. Um, usually gyms try to sell newcomers on personal trainers or usually give a free session with a trainer sometimes, depending on the gym, to get acquainted with the equipment and the machines. But this worked out favor. This guy will be more than happy to show his former crush or how to use things. She said uh, she should have hired one of those personal trainers that suggested she hire when she joined. I asked her what she wanted to accomplish in her workouts. I told her I could help her get started. Oh, I'm sure you can. Did she want to work out together? We've been working out three days a week together since then. There's an area of the gym where you can buy drinks, snacks, and sit down and talk. After her first workout, Lisa and I sat down to talk. She asked about Jill and me. I told her we are divorcing. There's no marriage to revive. She said she loves Jill, but Jill should have figured out she likes girls years ago and save us from all this drama. I said that Jill likes boys and girls and was probably never faithful to me. She apologized to me for Jill's behavior. What is going on with Lisa and her husband? She is divorcing him. My mother can have him. What's it like having Jill back in the house? She loves having both Jill and Jane there. She's fond of Jane, but Jane is something is something else. Lisa laughed and said that Jane keeps hitting on her. Jane's so obvious about it that Jill teases both Lisa and Jane about them hooking up. Keeps asking Lisa and Jane if they wanted Jill to leave so they can be alone together. Oh my god. Jill comes home and tells Jane that she needs to smell her fingers. <laughs> when Lisa goes to bed, Jill tells her mother Jane is willing to give her a, ma a massage to help her sleep. A massage, a massage your mother will never forget. Lisa is not interested in girls, but Jane is very determined. Lisa's the mother here. Lisa smiled and said that at least someone still finds her attractive. Jane's not the only one who finds Lisa attractive. I asked Lisa if she knew about her mother and her husband getting together when he was, was a bagger at the grocery store. Lisa said that's right. He used to work at the grocery store. She'd forgotten that. They must have been 15 or 16 at the time. Lisa didn't know about my mother. But it was then that he really started to push Lisa to have SEX. She thought they were too young, but she was in love. And she got pregnant. 
Lisa's father got him a job working nights in a warehouse where her father also worked, and they got married. Both sets of parents gave them no choice. Marry or be disowned. Lisa tried to make the best of it. She thought they were in love, but he also, but he also felt trapped. It's been a miserable marriage. When Lisa saw him kissing my mother at my wedding, she knew her marriage was finally over. But he made all sorts of promises to her and begged her not to divorce him. When she saw him leaving my mother's house, she threw him out in good riddance. Well, good for her. So Lisa and I have been working out together three times a week. After workouts, we shower at the gym and go out to lunch or dinner together. Long lunches and dinners. So, yes, you can have men and women work out at the gym, but if she has never done it before, ever, I don't know how you're doing it three times a week. After one workout, she'll probably be sore for five or six days. So maybe you're jumping ahead in time here, or she's going at an extremely light or moderate pace. But how are you deadlifting a few hundred pounds and, 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 and you're working with her, unless she has her little bar next to you or something like that? But whatever. I know what's going on here. Long lunches and dinners. She hadn't seen her grandson since I took him from Jill, so we meet up at the park near, near me or a restaurant so she can get to know him. As Saturday lunch together at the beginning of May, she asked me if I wanted to know the latest with Jill and Tony. Okay. It sounds that uh, Tony. It turns out that Tony is married and has a daughter. Aha. Uh -huh. Tony's cheating on his wife. I told you Tony's the same fucking guy he always was. I asked how she knows that. She said Jill and Jane came up with a brilliant idea that, that Jill would drive to Tony's house on the other side of the state and surprise him. She spent a few days with him there and meet his parents and friends. That would move Tony along and help strengthen their relationship. But when she arrived, Tony's wife answered the door, holding their daughter. So no more Tony. Jill and Jane are back to square one. Well, she has no one to mooch off of now. Now she's mooching off Lisa. Jill will be teaching in the fall, and Jane is looking for work. They can stay with Lisa as long as they want. It's nice having them in the house. But Lisa thinks they'll eventually go back to Guadalupe. How could she want these two hobags in her house, even if the one hobag is her daughter? Last Saturday, we were eating lunch, and Lisa put her hand on mine and said she'd like to see where I live. Oh, I'll be happy to oblige, Lisa. She's never been in my house. I looked at her to see what she was saying and what I hoped she was saying. She was. I told her she could come back with me after lunch, or we could just skip the rest of the lunch and leave now. There's nothing I'd like more to do than show her where I live, but we're both divorcing our spouses in an at-fault state. Our spouses can come after us for infidelity. With a mischievous smile, she said... She won't tell Jill if I won't. And I asked, who's Jill? And that is the end of part 10. So now our guy here is banging the mother of his soon-to-be ex-wife. And the mother whose husband is hooking up with his mom all these years. And the soap opera continues. So anyhow, bro, it's been interesting. But I'm sure there'll be more to tell in the adventures of you and Jill and Jane and Tony and Amy and your dad and your hoe bag mother. So... Have fun banging Lisa. Keep it quiet. And send me an update down the road when you're ready. And I'm sure there'll be stuff to share. See you then. All right, guys. That is it for today. Be sure to comment down below. Let me know what you think about this. I'm sure you guys will certainly comment away. Have a sure like the video. Share it with your friends and subscribe. I'll catch you next time.